Hello, my name is Brady and welcome or welcome back to the classroom. I'm in a little bit different of a spot today. Why? Well, I wanted a window while I talked to you guys, but why do I need a window? Because we're talking false color, how it works, what it is, and why it's an essential tool that you're gonna need to get your exposure spot on. And stick around to the end of this video for a little giveaway. Shh, it's at the end. But before we get going with our lesson today, please hit that like button, that share button, the subscribe button if you find this video or any of my other videos helpful. So false color, what exactly is it? Well, a lot of cinema cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket that I'm using now, or if not cinema cameras or your camera, a lot of external monitors will integrate a tool called false color. And what this does is apply specific colors to specific exposure values, all measured in something called IRE. And what IRE stands for is Institute of Radio Engineers. And I'm pretty sure, not 100%, but pretty sure the Institute of Radio Engineers is who developed this IRE measurement units, um, but the science I'm not 100% on. But let's go over the different exposure values and what they really mean and the exposure colors and what they mean. So we're gonna add on a visual as I talk and as I discuss these exposure values. So I'm gonna turn off this light here and then things are gonna start to get ugly. First and foremost, I'm gonna drop my camera settings all the way down to ISO 100. You're gonna start with pink or a magenta at the very bottom and that's gonna be your shadows. Everything is going to be very crushed. You're not going to have any information there. And you can think of the blue as the next step up. So you can start to see the blue around my shoulder, especially in my face. And that's kind of a warning sign saying you're about to crush your black. You're going to lose all your information. But then as I bring up the exposure, you can now start to see that my face comes into kind of a darker gray. So now you're at this lower range. I want to say about uh, 10 to 15, 10 to 20% of the IRE range. So you're still very, very low. And as you see, the exposure on myself is very low. So let's keep bringing up the ISO and you start to see that I get into this green area in my face. Now I'm very green. I'm right about the you know middle range. So I'm about like 30, 40% of the IRE range. So now I'm starting to get into what is really middle gray. So as I'm bringing in my exposure a little bit more, you start to see pink is the next step. Now you're getting up into the 50, 60% range. And a lot of the times this kind of pink area of your false color is gonna be where skin tones are properly exposed for. But moving forward here, you start to get in to this higher light gray area. And then obviously, as you see in the window, it's very red and that's gonna be completely blown out on the high end. So all of your highlights are blown out once everything is red. The yellow is a little bit of a warning. Let's bring it back a little bit. You start to get some yellow in there and oh, you start to get some yellow in there and it's a little bit of a warning saying you're about to clip, you should probably expose down a little bit. So that's a little visual example. Let's bring everything back home there. So that's a little bit of a visual example of the color changing as you go up the exposure range. Now what we're gonna do here together is utilize the false color to our advantage to expose a scene properly. So we're gonna get ugly again here. So first let's say I've got no lights and I just gotta bring up the camera's exposure and just light my face accordingly. So let's say we're gonna drop down that aperture and maybe bring the ISO up a little bit. So I'm pink, I'm green, I'm kind of right in that area of properly exposed skin tones. And you can see that the back window is extremely blown out, white, clipped, it looks ugly. Well, we're gonna use false color to our advantage here and we're gonna expose the scene properly because remember, expose for what you can't control. So in this case, the window and the daylight we can't control. So we're gonna use false color here to properly expose our window because false color is great for taking specific parts of your frame and telling the exposure values. So let's bring the aperture back up to about 3.7, ISO down to 400. And now you see, for the most part, that window is pretty well exposed. But myself, well, I'm on that very dark gray and blue range and we gotta bring some lighting in on me. Well, I've got a light here with a soft box. We're just gonna dial this up now. Okay, so bring that up to 10% or so. And then that's when you start to see, and we're gonna do that one more time while I'm sitting here. That's when you start to see that color change just on myself and just on my face. So you can use false color to your advantage to just isolate you know, my face. And what is this exact light doing? Well, let's turn it off. Let's turn it back on. 
let's make it really bright on myself. I mean, that's probably a little bit too bright. And then another tip that I like to do, or another trick that I like to do is if my lighting is motivated by a light source that you see in the frame, like the window, my light isn't going to be brighter than my actual practical light source because as light travels, it's gonna die off a little bit. So I look at my window and I say, okay, that's at about light gray, a little bit of pink, a little bit into the yellow. It's, it's pretty warm. So then I'm gonna expose my light on me to be a little bit less than that because if you, if you wanted to match all that up, it just doesn't look right. You know, the outside is bright. I'm just as bright. It just looks kind of weird. So bring that exposure on that light down to about where I had it. And now you start to see that we got a pretty good exposure going on here and we used false color as a tool to our advantage. So false color is a great way to check your exposure for particular areas of the frame, particular lights that you're adjusting, so on and so forth. Whereas a typical histogram or waveform or exposure meter is going to just take the entire image and say, well, it's overexposed or underexposed or it's exposed to the left or to the right. So false color is a great way to say, hey, look at myself, I'm too dark. Let's bring in some light. Uh, you know, that's about good. So like I said before, I am shooting on a Blackmagic Pocket 4K and I believe all of the Blackmagic cameras have false color integrated into the cameras and a lot of cameras do, but if your camera does not have false color, well, a lot of external monitors, even cheap ones like I think Feel World, Andy Cinna, I know Small HD has false color. I'm using an Atomos Ninja that has false color as well. So there's a lot of different ways to access this false color tool. And even sometimes when I'm editing, I've got a false color LUT that I'll slap on just to look at the overall exposure values afterwards after I've shot in DaVinci Resolve. But I hope that this video is very helpful for you guys, whether you already know about false color or you had no idea what false color was. Oh my God, I almost forgot. I almost ended this video and completely forgot to say that we hit 75,000 of you guys this week, like last Tuesday. And thank you, first of all, thank you, second of all, and thank you, third of all, because I couldn't have done it without each and every one of you. So I realized that I like to give away lights. Yes, it's my thing now. So with that being said, I wanna give away a few lights. So I worked with my friends over at Aperture to come up with three perfect lights that would be great to give away for you guys. And a lot of you had said that you would like an Aperture MC or you'd appreciate an Aperture MC. So with that being said, we're going with one Aperture MC, we're going with one Aperture MX and one Aperture MW. Three different lights, three different winners, yeah. So a couple different uh, requirements to enroll into this. I'm gonna put a link down below to be able to enroll for it. And I'm gonna say two weeks from this Monday. So that's going to be May 3rd. Uh, so I think it's May 17th, two weeks following. That is when I'm gonna, going to announce the winners in that video. But a couple requirements to be able to enroll into this. Well, subscribe to the channel, that helps. And also if you could please put down below one of your favorite videos and one video that you would like to see on this channel in the future, one tutorial that would be great for you to learn from. That's really all. Um, so, good luck. I'm excited to give away lights. Honestly, I just came up with this a couple of days ago. So I hope that you like the light options that I'm giving out for you guys, but that is all that I have for you today. So now, successfully class is dismissed. See you guys.